everybody, my name is Kate, and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. Today we'll be playing with pyros and also particles. Due to some unfortunate events, um, I, while I was recording this tutorial, I lost all my data, so I'm refilming all of this. So I'm just going to walk you through what I built and how you get this end result. Um, I just named this nebula build because it kind of just reminds me of a nebula on screen. And plus you get that plane like that. But anyway, we'll dive inside and get going. So you can see I was playing with a round, a plane with a lot of pop nets, but I'll walk you through each one of these. So I started over here. I started over here, and I'm gonna go back to frame one just because I don't want it to be solving simulation objects while I'm clicking through and explaining everything. And I'm gonna hide out objects. I'm going to go to light, just so I can show you what's going on. And I've created a circle. Um, these are the changes that I've made to it. I've then subdivided it. Currently it's kind of hard to see, I think. Let me just add a normal down so you can see what the changes that are happening. Ah, it might be my lights then. Yeah, it's my lights. So after I've created my circle, I've subdivided it, I've added a mountain to give it some variation, rematched it, and then I've added an attribute paint, which is kind of like the new paint soft in Houdini 18, and I've painted some values around the edges of the circle. And one way you can do that is going to attributes, changing, um, by default this says mask, just change it to CD. And then go to brush here, and then you can paint on your color values. Then I went to scatter, grab the density attribute, change it to CD, and then scatter the points on the edges here. Now this is where it gets a little bit weird because I took the normals of the points, and I'll show you what they look like here. If we turn on the normals, we don't see any. If we go to normals here, we see them, and they're all pointing inwards and I've made my velocity equal to normals that are pointing inwards. And you'll see why in a second. So if you dive into this pop net, our particles are going to be pushing themselves outwards. And they'll kind of look like that. So I've gone to my source first input. I've animated my impulse activation. And I found this has got better results than just ending it after frame one. So I've kept it on until frame 11, and then it turns off at frame 12. And then I've gone to my attributes and I've cranked up the inherited velocity, gone to my pop lens, made some changes here, and that was it. So then I went to time shift and I froze it at frame 21. You can do this by dropping down a regular time shift. And just going here and deleting channels and it will delete the channel at whatever frame you choose and it won't move. Then I deleted all the attributes except for velocity um, as I would need that later. And then I went over here. And all I did over here was that is sampling the same emitter but this pop net is a little bit different. Still has its um, impulse activation animated to frame 11 to frame 12. But yeah, so, but I think the impulse count is just a little bit lower. Then we've time shifted it to frame 20. Added another pop net. And there isn't really any changes here other than the constant birth rate. And which, what this one does is it, is it just explodes out where it words from the resting point of our previous particles. Now you can choose to animate this simulation with the particles going outwards. Um, for me, it was just simpler to just leave them stationary and static. So I just added a time shift and placed it down where I wanted it. So technically you could just get rid of these, but it would also leave, leave your, end, your end pyro simulation being longer and also harder to control. So I have put another time shift down at frame 26. 
Attribute delete is the same one as here. For all of these, I've just copy pasted my attribute delete. And then I've just added a null. So over here, it's almost the same thing, but the shape of the circle is different. Subdivide, mountain, sort of the same. Remesh, attribute paint, I've painted the edges, scattered the points, turned off relax iterations, and just copy and paste this normal from this normal over here. So these are the same. For this pop net, let's do something a little bit different where it explodes out words like that. And then you'll notice that the more the longer the simulation for the particles lasts, the more chaotic the particles get. So I've time shifted at this to frame 20, so it's not too chaotic. Attribute delete and particle level two out. This one down here um, is some additional particles that are essentially the same thing or the same concept as we talked about earlier, where it's just emitting particles from our resting point. So really there's nothing here except for, that I changed except for the constant birth rate. Same thing as well. And that's kind of what it looks like. So I've time shifted that at frame 26. Attribute deletes the same and then it's going out. Over here is another circle subdivided, another mountain slop. This is remeshed and painted. Um, and I just wanted that edge over here. Then I scattered it. Same normal as the next one. So all of them are facing inwards. And then the particle count looks something like this. Four thousands. And then the pop one looks like that. Nothing's really changed. Time shifted down to frame 22. Transformed it out a little bit, and you'll see why later. Um, attribute deletes the same, and then particle level three out is the null. So when these are all merged together, they look something like this. And you can choose any shape you want, but this is the one I ended up with. So it's got a very um, like dense circle here, and then it's got some particles leaning out here. And the particles leaning out here would be the ones over here. And if I take away this transform, it's actually farther out. And I just wanted to condense it in a little bit more. So it's almost like a galaxy nebula explosion shape. And I'll just walk you through which levels are, what are which. So if you go there, that's the inner circle. If you go here, that's chopping that big chunk out there. Same goes for this side. And same goes for this side. So you can choose what to keep, what you not like to keep, but it's up to you. The circle I don't really need. I was using it as a reference point for the center. And then down here, I have attribute randomized the P scale. Um, if you don't do this before you create the emitter for your pyro, you run into issues. So remember to do that. And then I've added a little out here. And this is where I went to go create my job now. So what I've ended up doing is um, you get to the stage where you create your null. And what you'll need to do is lay down a dob net. Let's dive inside. Go to your pyro effects. Click billowy smoke. And just make sure you've got your simulation object selected. And it should create another smoke simulation inside of .NET. So you can just choose where your .NET is. 
Um, but since I've already done that, I'm just going to delete it because I don't want them overlapping and things getting complicated. So down here when it automatically creates your density and um, density fields for your pyro, what you'll need to do is just go through here and I don't really, I haven't really changed too many settings. Here, it's pretty much all the same. And then rasterizing the particles, these are my settings. Then we can dive inside here and I can explain the changes that I made to it. Now, if you, I have a high res sim going, so this is my division size, and I highly recommend that you don't operate um, when you're making edits to your simulation for this level of dis division size. So just for time's sake, I'm going to go up to 0.5 so we can skim through it and it'll be faster. Um, max bounds, that should be turned off. We don't really need that. Uh, for the shape, I mean for the simulation, these are my changes. I didn't want it rising up, I just wanted to go into the sides. Combustion was off. For the shape, these are all the changes that I made. Disturbance field, that's all I did. And then over here, I haven't made any more changes. So we'll just play this back so you guys can get a better, better feel for it. And then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so this is finished simming out and you can kind of see the our portal shape being formed. So if we jump out here, we can see that we have two things going on. One is our pyro import that is importing our smoke and our stars. Um, and what these are is it's just bringing in the nebula out null that I created earlier and it's attribute randomizing the p-scale a little bit lower and then it's adding this attribute VOP, which is adding some color values. So I'll just turn off these modifiers and you can see it introducing some white and black values into the particle mix. Now, the other thing to note here is that I was playing around with the lights and in the photograph that you saw, when you clicked on the video, you notice that there's green and blue lights going on. Um, so I'll zoom into my camera, my camera one, I believe. And I'll show you how I did that. So currently you can see the green and blue lights forming there. So what I did is um, I set up a distant light um, and this is its color value and its intensity and then I transformed it to this location here. Another thing I did is I created another area light and if we turn this off It doesn't make too much of a difference, so you could actually get rid of it, but it creates some orangey colors. I shouldn't say blue, it should say orange. Um, but yeah, it has an intensity of 5, and I've transformed it to this location here. Um, area light over here is like a bluey green. I didn't really change the intensity or exposure too much, and this is the value that I transformed it to. This green one, intensity 1.4, and then translated to this value. Same goes for this green one, intensity 4, and that value as well. And right now, if we zoom in over here, you can kind of see these lines starting to appear. Um, and those lines are our points or our little stars there that you can see appearing in the render. And I'll let that run around and we can take a good look at it and then I'll wrap up the tutorial. Okay, so as you can see, it's still rendering, but I also have to go over many my materials for the clouds and also the glowy little particles you see in here. So the smoke is on the pyro import and the glow color is on the stars. Oh. If you go to the glow, those are my settings. And if I go to the billowy smoke, I've gone over here to the intensity, changed the smoke intensity to a 1.4 and the smoke color to that color. I'm going to the temperature, turn the emission down to zero, change the temperature field from, um, I've changed it from temperature to density 
and then it's mapping the temperature to density color over here and those are pretty much the colors feel free to pick any which one you choose but those are pretty much the color values that I've chosen per color if you want to replicate it and that's pretty much it and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial sorry it was a bit rushed and I'll see you in the next one bye